Hi guys, welcome back again to my YouTube channel and today we're having another video and the title is This is why Allah created sickness mm, The title itself is This is why Allah created a sickness It's a very good title, I think this one is a very good video So, But before anything else, if you are new to my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe Click that bell so that you will notify on my next upload. So uh, let's jump in straight to the video in one, two, three, go. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies his sleeves. He sends upon them calamities in their life in many forms. From among these forms is that he tests them in their health. And this is what we're going to focus about today, about sickness. And what are we supposed to do when we are sick? Or when our relatives and those that we love are sick, what are we supposed to do? Now, my brothers and sisters in Islam, why sickness? Where did this sickness come? Where did illness come from? Why did Allah Azza wa Jal create illness? You see, you and I certainly believe that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to eliminate sickness out of this world, He is able to do so. No one forces Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do anything. He subhanahu wa ta'ala could do anything. He could have created us healthy. And he could have created us with full health all our life. And he could have decreed upon us that death would happen in an instant, in a second. So what's the wisdom and purpose for why Allah Azza wa Jal created sickness? And not only one form, many forms and many kinds. And why does Allah Azza wa Jal decree this sickness upon the young, upon the old, upon any, in any age or any stage of life you're in. Very simply, I'll answer this question with you. And that is that, you know, if Allah Azza wa Jal did not create sickness and we weren't afflicted and tested with sickness, then we will never ever recognize and realize and know and discover the beautiful name of Allah Azza wa Jal Ash-Shafi. We will never turn to Allah Azza wa Jal Mankind, that's how he is. Mankind, this is how he is. He drowns in the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he forgets the one who provided him with the blessings. Innahu kana zaluman jahula. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Inna al-insana la kafoorun mubeen. That the human being is kafoor. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned that the human is kafoor. Kafoor here means that he is ungrateful. Inna al-insana li rabbihi la kanood. The human being is ungrateful. So as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends upon us calamities and he tests us in our wealth, especially in our health, so that we turn to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that we recognize and realize our weakness and humble ourselves and turn to Allah azza wa jal and discover his beautiful name as Shafi. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when a person falls sick and ill, this is the time to explore and discover the beauty of Allah's name, Ash-Shafi, the healer. Allahu Akbar, this is a time in where now you are one, one to one with Allah's name, Ash-Shafi. This is when you're going to discover Allah's name, Ash-Shafi. When you're in complete health and in full strength and ability and power, you do not recognize Allah's name, Ash-Shafi. You will not see an importance to Allah's name, Ash-Shafi. But when you're sick, you are forced to discover and explore Allah's name as Shafi and to turn to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala through His name as Shafi. We're going to speak how are we going to make advantage, take advantage, and make the most use of the name of Allah Azza wa Jal as Shafi. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, prophets, yani beloved people to Allah Azza wa Jal became sick. Like Ayyub alayhi salam, 18 yes. years of sickness on his bed, he couldn't move. The entire tribe, his entire tribe ran away from him because they feared that his sickness is so contagious that anyone could be afflicted or affected by it. So they all ran away. He couldn't move. 18 years. His wife had to carry him to go to the bathroom for 18 years. These are prophets I'm telling you about that they got sick. And why am I telling you this? Because when one gets sick, that's the first thing you should know. The first thing is you should recognize Allah's name as Shafi. The second thing you should recognize and realize is that you're not alone. And you're not unique in your sickness. 
Allah Azza wa Jal has tested people with sickness way before you that were way better than you. And that is prophets. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became sick, especially towards the end of his life. And he died from a sickness sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so it is important to know what are we supposed to do when we become sick, when we fall ill. And this is bound to happen. This is bound to happen. You will experience sickness and illness in your life. We ask Allah Azza wa to give us shifa. And we ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who show gratitude to the health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But what happens if you fall sick? And most importantly, what did the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? And what did he advise his ummah of doing when they fall ill, when they become sick? Listen, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the first and foremost thing that a sick person is supposed to do, listen carefully. And I'm going to yani, share with you a hadith so that this point, I can drive it into your mind and into your heart. The first absolute thing is ad-du'a. And I know, wallahi, I know that you all might know. Yes, okay, we know. We make du'a. Relax. Stay with me. So I can explain to you what exactly dua does and what it is and what is the best form of dua to make when you're sick or when others of your relatives and your beloved ones are sick. Listen now. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an authentic hadith narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, great sahabi. He said that, مَرَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِقَوْمٍ مُبْتَلَيْنَ فقال أما كان هؤلاء يسألون الله العافية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم one day he passed by a tribe a group of people that were afflicted by something perhaps they were sick or something else they were tested severely tested that you can even see it on their faces and in the way they live they were really really tested when النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم when he walked past by them he looked at them and he said, Ama kana ha Allah al Didn't these people ever ask Allah Azza wa Jal for protection? Didn't they ever make a dua? In other words, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that one of the biggest reasons for why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alleviate hardship and illness and sickness from a person is by him making dua. And asking Allah for al-afiyah, al-afiyah is protection. Protection from all illnesses, from all harms in this life and in the grave and in the hereafter. One of the best dua you could ever make, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah. And this is part of adhkar al-sabah al masa the supplication that we're supposed to read during the morning and in the afternoon. فَأَمَا كَانَ هَؤُلَاءِ يَسْأَلُونَ اللَّهَ الْعَافِيَةِ And this is an authentic hadith. So we're learning already from the first hadith that the first thing we're supposed to do is a dua, turn to Allah in dua. Now listen to the second hadith. This is also narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Now listen to how beautiful this is. He said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he visited one of the sick from among the Muslims. He visited him. And this person has become so sick that his voice was almost gone. You know how when a sick, you know, when someone is sick, he cannot scream loud. His voice is very soft, you know. When a sick, person, a sick person on the bed, how does he call out? You know, get me a cup of water. He speaks slow, he speaks slow with a low voice because he's sick. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he visited this man from among the Muslims. And this, this man, his voice was almost gone due to how sick he was. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, هل كنت تدعو بشيء أو تسأله إياه؟ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم was surprised. He said to him, Did you used to ask Allah for this calamity? Did you make dua that Allah give you this sickness and this illness? So this man, he said, yes, I asked Allah for this sickness, for this calamity. Strange. So, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, what did you used to say? 
Then the man said, I used to say, Oh Allah, whatever you are going to punish me in the afterlife, then punish me in this worldly life. And Allah Azza wa Jal had answered his dua and punished him with sickness in this life until the point where his voice was almost gone. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard this, he was shocked. How could a person ask Allah to punish him in this life before the hereafter? And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah. And this is teaching us the permissibility of saying Subhanallah when you're amazed at something. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, La tutiquhu, la tastati'uhu. He said to him, you cannot handle Allah's punishment in this life, nor in the, in the hereafter. Don't ever ask Allah Azza wa that he hasten your punishment in this life before the hereafter. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him how to make a dua when he's sick. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Why didn't you say, Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar? Why didn't you make this dua when you were sick? In other words, once again, in this hadith, we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching those who are sick to make a dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. So the first dua that we spoke about was Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah. Oh Allah, I ask you for complete protection in my health okay. and everything. Dua for sickness. Ah, there's a, there a prayer for that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for uh, suggesting videos to me so we can watch together. So keep sending links to me so we can watch together. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for subscribing to my channel. And see you guys on my next upload. Bye, everybody.